Hey guys, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the ranged generals and we're basically just going to look at them and see if any of them are uh, usable at zero stars. Well, not really usable, but are they as good as a fully maxed out regular general? And we're just going to get an idea of how much return on investment you get for five stars. Because if you watched my later videos, you know that Washington Prime is better than any free general fully ascended, even with uh, no red stars at all. So we're looking to see if there's any ranged generals that can fit that criteria. Now, first, this thing is calibrated for a tier 15 K40 March, 2000% buff, uh, reasonably high rally size. These numbers right here are for our memory. We, this is the damage, the effective attack of Ragnar. Electra and Winfield Scott, who are going to be the two free generals. And then the floor of that's going to be Jumong at 38.5 billion. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to take these, base skill, copy it, paste it into here, and that tells us on the calculator here what those numbers would look like for a base level general, but with all of their other things as well. So we can see initially that none of them at their base level beat a fully ascended free general, which is good. It's at least a little bit more balanced than the mounted generals are, but some of them do get close. Ragnar specifically is very close to Electra and Winfield. And if you already have a Ragnar and you haven't already started working on Electra or Winfield yet, you could probably just use Ragnar and not notice much of a difference either way. Especially if you have a couple red stars on him, then he's definitely going to perform better than these two. Sigurd also is going to perform quite well at the base level in comparison with the free generals. After that, though, it does start to drop down. We have three at 44 billion. Charles, Elaner, and Merlin. So these ones definitely could be used. And then after that, it does drop down slowly down to the the floor of the fully maxed generals with only these ones beating up Jumong. So there's not as many that are usable as there are for the mounted generals. And the difference isn't going to be as uh, shocking. So it's probably better to keep investing in your free general. But if you haven't already started, and you happen to have Sigurd, Ragnar, or even Charles Elena or Merlin, or one of these other ones, it might be worth it just to invest in their uh, their covenants, uh, specialties, and just uh, ignore the Red Star Ascensions on a free general. So that could be usable. The second thing we want to look at is how are these guys going to perform once you get to the star level where they get their march size. Now, here's how we're going to do that. This is very rudimentary, and it's not going to be as precise as the other measurement, but it will give you a general idea. We're just going to paste the base numbers, and we're going to keep the fully ascended march size. Uh, the reasoning behind this is that the majority of generals get their march size in one block at three stars, but you're going to want to look at the specific generals for your specific case to see when they get that march size, if you have that, and then any attack that they get along with that. But this is just going to give us a rough idea of, does the extra march size change the picture at all? And when we sort by effective damage, we can see that uh, it, does, it does a little bit. That puts Ragnar, Sigurd slightly above Electra. The rest of them just get a little bit closer. So nothing too severe in terms of extra march size you would get. So it seems like the march size isn't playing a super huge role for the ranged troops. And the reason for that is that the per unit damage for archers is going to be lower than the per unit damage for mounted. So more archers versus more uh, mounted troops. You're going to get more return on the mounted troops just because their their damage is higher overall. So that's the way that shakes out. So 
and it's not going to be a huge difference if you get the extra march size from their skills, but it does make them slightly better. So yeah, it seems like there aren't really any that are night and day better than the free generals at the base level, or even once they get their march sizes, none that really stick out. But if you have one of the top contenders and you do have a couple stars on them, it might be worth swapping over to them from your free general if your free general is not fully ascended yet. Uh, it's highly situation dependent, so I encourage y'all to follow my links to the Google Sheets that I'm going to have this on. Uh, to edit this like I do, you're going to have to download it. Don't request access. Uh, that would give you access to the overall spreadsheet to edit it for everybody. So just download it for yourself. And then you can edit these numbers, you can play with them. If you want to see how they'll perform at three stars, you can put in the numbers for that, three stars. And you can say you don't want to do a covenant, you can just zero out these boxes. And you can see how that's going to affect the results. So yeah. Hopefully this uh, short video has been informative. Hopefully I'll find you something useful out of it. And I will catch you all in the next one.